technology started to seep into the agenda and the transformation in your view happened in the 2014, 2015 planning period and then execution. I think that's right. I think that's right. I think that's right. Yep. And, and, and really the manifestation is now. The manifestation is the last you know nine months, I think. Lots that's of- right. So we're living in a very interesting time. What about large corporations? I mean, what's going on? You've got these mega hundred billion dollar plus companies, and it seems like they own the city and they have free reign to, you know, take their product and, and implement it everywhere. I mean, you gave an example of Tencent. Shenzhen is one of the most, you know, amazing places when it comes to how they're experimenting and using tech. Uh, yeah. Is it fair to say that large companies own their regional territory and they're the ones who are sort of, you know, they're a huge employer and, and they've got sort of a monopoly on technology there? That's a great point. You know, that's what John D. Rockefeller had when he controlled the right. entire uh, gas supply, and oil supply of America going through the Erie Canal in Pennsylvania down to Maryland and Ohio, right? He controlled the American oil and gas supply and his company was broken up. We are gonna ha- we're, we're going through that right now. With Alibaba? Uh, because, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, but in both, both countries, all three, Europe, America, and China. And so so I, I will tell you my private theory yeah. why uh, the, the Ant Financial IPO was canceled was exactly what you're talking about, where, where there was a sense I got uh, again, I'm just talking as a person. I don't have any affiliation to any of the companies I'm going to mention, and I don't own any Alibaba stock. But I would say Alibaba had some thinking that they were going to be uh, sort of a, pay, a, 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 a parallel railroad company, <laughs> parallel to, to BSN and a, a company called Red Date that was building out BSN. And China was like, no, not so much. That's not part of the plan. The plan is we're going to run the rail, our rail, BSN. Right, that's gonna that's a state monopoly, right? Because guess what's gonna be on it? The currency, right? And we're not gonna have the currency running on ant and 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 ten cent. That's too dangerous. In the same way, I think America's gonna have to wake up to the reality that Amazon keeps getting bigger and bigger, Apple, right, gets bigger and bigger, Google is getting bigger and bigger. They can't if they get into smart cities, you can't have co- private companies running smart cities. So along comes this company, Red Date and BSN. And so China basically said, look, at, we've told you 180 times, Ant, you, you're not doing this. This is not happening. And Jack Ma what, didn't get the memo. And was, so not was only- it too was, much ambition, you think? Too much hubris there? Realizing that, you know, at some hey, point, you feel you like- said it, man. But, but you also, said it. if you look, how, how often do you hear to succeed in China, you need to know someone, right? Surely you get to a point where you feel like, okay, I got the government in my pocket, I can do what I want. And then suddenly you step on the toes and your whole company can be broken up and you're ceding potential market share to competitors who are willing to play ball and do things the way you know China says they need to be done. Amen, brother, that's exactly what happened. And then on top of that, when you insult the central bank and, and tell them that they, essentially <laughs> that they, they, they're not even capable of running a bus station. You know, they don't even know how to sell bus tickets at a bus station. That's really, really not good. Because like, if you're the CEO of like, I don't know, BNP or HSBC in New York, and you tell the Fed they're a bunch of idiots, you're going to be replaced in about a week, right? You know, that's what's going to happen to you, right? And so you don't do that, right? You, you, you Especially the central banks, they get really angry when you like publicly humiliate them because they have to maintain their credibility because that's the credibility of the country. That's what was going on here. The credibility of the country and the need for a safe uh, rollout of BSN along um, uh, and and the e-currency along sort of a safe route, which is one of those weird, um, one of those weird, uh, you know, things everyone is struggling with, which is, wait a minute here, This is a blockchain, but it's a monopoly. Huh, that's not exactly what we talk about when we think about blockchain. But central banks are watching China very carefully. And I'm telling you right now, I've been to several central bank conferences in the last six months. They're all going to have to think of an open, closed system here. This is what's going to have to happen. Because guess what it's called when you try to be a parallel central bank? That's called counterfeiting. Counterfeiting has to be a felony or we'll have a really big problem in the whole wide world, right? And so the ECB's trying to figure this out. The Fed's trying to figure this out, right? And uh, the Middle East, the the, the UAE uh, is really active in this. The, the UAE is probably going to be a, a central, you know, sort of uh, uh, railroad for the, um, the these new e-currencies. But the good news is, 
if you're at Alibaba or Tencent or, or ByteDance, you get to be the train station. The train station is where they have the coffee, the popcorn, the newspapers, the beer, the liquor, the entertainment, the, you know, um, every, the tickets for everything else in the country, right? That's the train station. You can do that. You just I, can't be the railroad. I'm trying to get my head around the fact that in the West, the belief is you focus on a clear customer problem and you attack that niche and you basically deliver what we call a single point solution. And you do that really well and you very, very carefully expand, but you pretty much stay in your lane. What is with the tendency in China for companies to go full stack so fast? Um, how, how is this possible? It goes against the business logic that, you know, you're taught out when you go to business school and you're a lecturer, right? So I'm, I'm curious, um, the rise of the super apps and Chinese companies and Asian companies too. I don't, I haven't just seen this in China. I've seen this throughout the Asian region. Companies are trying to build everything internally and trying to build this massive stack. Help, please help me get my head around that. I know it's a great point. You know, I've been teaching MBA students, you know, for 21 years and I taught in LA and where I'm from and I taught in you know, China and Hong Kong and Singapore and London and New York and, and uh, you know, all over the place, Brazil. I would say, yeah, I, I would say that that the, 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 the old um, model that was a catastrophe was exactly what you're talking about, that, that to diversified conglomerates blew to smithereens, right? Because <laughs> they, they were they were all these physical things all over the place. And like banks, becoming a universal bank was a catastrophe. It was a disaster, right? Citibank tried and it blew up. It blew Citibank to smithereens, right? Because it was trying to be an insurance company and a bank and an investment bank and a broker and a you know a retail lender and all that jazz, right? Well, guess what? When you have a world of, of, of digital technology, you want to be universal, right? The, the data that you get, right? We, we use this phraseology, the confirmation of data sources, right? The more independent data sources you have, the better off you are as a diversified conglomerate. So weirdly, a lot of property companies in China are diversified conglomerates. Like you said, in America, the property companies are very singular, right? That they're in residential, they're in commercial, they're in industrial, right? You, you, you seldom see you know, uh, uh, companies that are uh, diversified. The more diversified you are as a digital company, the better your data, the better your information, the, 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 more, the more data rich uh, you know, is your, your world. And, and, and I'll give you the example we haven't talked about yet, Ping On. Ping On is so data rich because Ping On has you know, insurance, it has car insurance, it has medical insurance, it has life insurance, it has the pharmacy, the hospital, the clinic, uh, right? And then it has the bank and the insurance company. And so there's no richer diversified digital conglomerate uh, right now than Ping On. This goes against everything that was taught in, in, in the physical world. And that was true because what happens in the physical world with GE and all the companies that blew themselves to smithereens, they became silo. Each individual division was uh, not talking to each other. And so they weren't cooperating. So there was no synergies. There was no economies of scale. The purpose of diversification collapsed. In a digital world where data is the center, when data is the center of your business, the, the, the more diversified you are, the, the bigger you get. So are you saying this is the new model that um, being focused isn't the way to go and that this model is sustainable? Uh, uh, you know, and is it sustainable globally or just in, just in China because of the unique situation there? I wrote a book about this uh, a couple of years ago <laughs> called AI and Quantum Computing in Finance and Insurance. Our conclusion in the book was the as long as long as data is a center of your business, uh, the more circles, the more circles, it, it's a circle. It, it's, it's a circle of ever growing circles around a center of data. If, if the C-suite is the center of your business, you're dead in this world. If data is the center of your business, you have a living, breathing, thriving thing where uh, the concentric circles reinforce the business and you get new types of data, new types of revenue, and new ways to integrate uh, manufacturing, advertising, buildings, logistics, uh, and so forth. And you can end up integrating finance and insurance in brand new ways. I'm going to tell you, I think PropTech, you know, I wrote a book, I wrote my first book on, on FinTech back in 2013. And even then, the banks were like, why are you writing this book? What are you talking about? Well, we'll, we'll just get there. We, we, we won't get there now. Uh, nobody's going to figure this out because we own all the plumbing, so don't worry about it. But thanks for coming to the board of directors meeting. Uh, don't let the, let, let the door hit you in the ass on the way out, Mr. Schulte. I feel exactly the same thing with prop tech. 
that that people are coming in and, and, and that they're slow. They're actually they're rapidly gluing all different kinds of 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 um, operations of both insurance and finance onto the O to O world. That they're figuring out via digitization, 5G, and blockchain how they can they can meld finance and insurance onto advertising, marketing, merchandising. Uh, pedestrian traffic, um, the, the, uh, the environmental controls, utility costs, um, and even the civic stuff, uh, you know, bus tokens, metro tokens, right? Um, you know, the integration of all of those uh, financial elements of civic life, tickets, fines, marriage, births, death, um, transportation, and so forth. And, and, and that's where smart cities come in, right? And, and if you have those super apps, it, it, it's very easy to glue this stuff together and I feel that in the last maybe four to six months, Amazon is really waking up to this. Google's waking up oh, to this. But, you know, but I, I just wonder, I, 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 you're in a better position to tell me what you see going on there. You know, my, my belief is I think, um, I think Zuck and I think Bezos and I think, you know, Cook is spending a lot of time in China and starting to realize wow, you know, there's a model here. For once, actually, we're the ones trying to imitate. Now, Amen. Apple, exactly. Amazon's trying that's to the, become... The, uh, right. That's Amazon's the conclusion of the book. Back. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. The, the conclusion of the book is a lot of the technology currently in China is going to be exported to the rest of the world. Uh, and, yes. and, and the U.S. the U.S. can copy it. Now, here's my question for you. See, I, I think that... And, and, and the last chapter of the book is all about the fact that the U.S. is going to have to go and do a just a spectacular Apollo <laughs> program again with gigantic amounts of defense Pentagon spending and get with the program. And of course, this is exactly what they've been condemning, you know, and, and, and trashing Huawei for for four years was its affiliation to the military. And so now, you know, it, uh, there's a great site called DefenseOne.com, very good site, uh, very good info. And and you know what they're doing right now is you know, who's taking the lead in 5G? The military. That's yeah. what's going on right now, right? Who's taking the lead in, in 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 edge technology? The military. Who's taking the lead in smart cities? The military, right? <laughs> 